STS-71 was the third mission of the U.S. – Russian Shuttle Mir program and the first Space Shuttle docking to Russian Space Station Mir. It started on 27 June 1995 with the launch of Space Shuttle Atlantis from Launchpad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The shuttle delivered a relief crew of two cosmonauts Anatoly Soloviev and Nikolai Budarin to the station and recovered increment astronaut Norman Thagard. Atlantis returned to Earth on 7 July with a crew of eight. It was the first of seven straight missions to Mir flown by Atlantis. For the five days the shuttle was docked to Mir they were the largest spacecraft in orbit at the time. STS-71 marked the first docking of a space shuttle to a space station, the first time a shuttle crew switched members with the crew of a station, and the 100th manned space launch by the United States. The mission carried Spacelab and included a logistical resupply of Mir. Together the shuttle and station crews conducted various on-orbit joint U.S.-Russian life science investigations with Spacelab along with the Shuttle Amateur Radio Experiment 2 experiment. Crew <coughs> 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 Mission highlights The primary objectives of this flight were to rendezvous and perform the first docking between the Space Shuttle and the Russian Space Station Mir on 29 June. In the first U.S.-Russian docking in 20 years, Atlantis delivered a relief crew of two cosmonauts Anatoly Soloviev and Nikolai Budarin to Mir. Other prime objectives were on-orbit joint United States of America-Russian life sciences investigations aboard Spacelab, Mir, logistical resupply of the Mir and recovery of U.S. astronaut Norman E. Thagard. Secondary objectives included filming with the IMAX camera and the Shuttle Amateur Radio Experiment 2 experiment. STS-71 was the 100th U.S. human space launch conducted from Cape Canaveral, the first U.S. Space Shuttle Russian Space Station docking and joint on-orbit operations, largest spacecraft ever in orbit, and the first on-orbit changeout of shuttle crew. The rendezvous sequence began at 15 hours 32 minutes and 19 seconds Eastern Daylight Saving Time with a lift-off in plane with Mir's orbit, at the opening of the 10-minute 19-second launch window. Ascent was nominal with no Ohms-1 burn required. The Ohms-2 burn, initiated at 42 minutes 58 seconds mission elapsed time, adjusted the orbit to 160 by 85.3 nautical miles. It was the lowest ever perigee altitude flown by an orbiter. This facilitated a very rapid initial catch-up rate with Mir of about 880 nautical miles per orbit. Almost three hours later the orbit was raised to more typical values of 210 by 159 nautical miles by the Ohms-3 burn. Docking occurred at 9 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, 29 June, using R-bar or Earth radius vector approach, with Atlantis closing in on Mir from directly below. R-bar approach allows natural forces to break the orbiter's approach more than would occur along standard approach directly in front of the space station. Also, an R-bar approach minimizes the number of orbiter jet firings needed for approach. The manual phase of the docking began with Atlantis about a half mile 800 meters below Mir, with Gibson at the controls on aft flight deck. Stationkeeping was performed when the orbiter was about 75 meters 246 feet from Mir, pending approval from Russian and U.S. flight directors to proceed. Gibson then maneuvered the orbiter to a point about 10 meters 33 feet from Mir before beginning the final approach to station. Closing rate was close to the targeted 0.1 foot per second 30 millimeters per second, being approximately 0.107 foot per second 33 millimeters per second at contact. 
Interface contact was nearly flawless, less than 25 mm in lateral misalignment and an angular misalignment of less than 0.5 degrees per axis. No braking jet firings had been required. Docking occurred about 216 nautical miles, 400 kilometers, 250 miles above Lake Baikal region of the Russian Federation. The Orbiter Docking System ODS with androgynous peripheral docking system served as the actual connection point to a similar interface on the docking port on Mir's crystal module. ODS, located in the forward payload bay of Atlantis, performed flawlessly during the docking sequence. When linked, Atlantis and Mir formed the largest spacecraft ever in orbit, with a total mass of about 225 metric tons, almost one half million pounds, orbiting some 218 nautical miles, 404 kilometers, 251 miles above the Earth. After hatches on each side opened, STS-71 crew passed into Mir for a welcoming ceremony. On the same day, the Mir-18 crew officially transferred responsibility for the station to the Mir-19 crew, and the two crews switched spacecraft. For the next five days, about 100 hours in total, joint U.S.-Russian operations were conducted, including biomedical investigations, and transfer of equipment to and from Mir. Fifteen separate biomedical and scientific investigations were conducted, using the Spacelab module installed in the aft portion of Atlantis's payload bay, and covering seven different disciplines, cardiovascular and pulmonary functions, human metabolism, neuroscience, hygiene, sanitation and radiation, behavioral performance and biology, fundamental biology, and microgravity research. The Mir-18 crew served as test subjects for investigations. Three Mir-18 crew members also carried out an intensive program of exercise and other measures to prepare for re-entry into gravity environment after more than three months in space. Numerous medical samples as well as discs and cassettes were transferred to Atlantis from Mir, including more than 100 urine and saliva samples, about 30 blood samples, 20 surface samples, 12 air samples, several water samples and numerous breath samples taken from Mir-18 crew members. Also moved was a broken SALYUT-5 computer. Transferred to Mir were more than 450 kilograms (990 pounds) of water generated by the orbiter for waste system flushing and electrolysis, specially designed spacewalking tools for use by the Mir-19 crew during a spacewalk to repair a jammed solar array on the SPEC-TR module, and transfer of oxygen and nitrogen from shuttle's environmental control system to raise air pressure on the station to improve Mir's consumables margin. The spacecraft undocked on 4 July, following a farewell ceremony, with the Mir hatch closing at 3.32 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time 3 July and hatch on orbiter docking system shut 16 minutes later. Gibson compared separation sequence to a cosmic Ballet. Prior to the Mir Atlantis undocking, the Mir 19 crew temporarily abandoned station, flying away from it in the Soyuz spacecraft so they could record images of Atlantis and Mir separating. Soyuz unlatched at 6.55 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, and Gibson undocked Atlantis from Mir at 7.10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. The returning crew of eight equaled the largest crew STS October 1985 in shuttle history. To ease their re-entry into gravity environment after more than 100 days in space, Mir-18 crew members Thagard, Dezhurov and Strakalov lay supine in custom-made recumbent seats installed prior to landing in the orbiter Midic. In-flight problems included a glitch with General Purpose Computer 4 GPC4, which was declared failed when it did not synchronize with GPC1, subsequent troubleshooting indicated it was an isolated event, and GPC4 operated satisfactorily for the remainder of mission. During the SAREX portion of the flight, the crew contacted several schools. 
One was Redlands High School in Redlands, CA. Charlie Precourt was able to contact students, former students and technicians that built the communications package. A cross-polarized, dual-band Yagi antenna array and automatic rotor was installed on the roof of the electronics classroom. A dual-band radio was installed inside the radio room of the classroom. The contact window lasted about 10 minutes, during which time, about 12 people were able to ask questions. While most were basic or technical questions, one peculiar fact was asked. What would happen if you sneezed inside your helmet? Precourt answered that you'd probably spray your face shield a little bit and carry on. Topic. See also: List of human spaceflights, List of human spaceflights to Mir, List of space shuttle missions. Outline of Space Science United States Astronaut Hall of Fame Hashtag Exhibits <laughs>